Hello, welcome to another episode of Out of Stand Nation. We've got another fiery week. Um, lot made a lot easier for us to decide be, um, with uh, Aura's help. So, um, yeah, yeah. trying a new <laughs> uh, document process and eating turtle yeah, chips. Yeah, yeah these are right. delicious, by the way. Oh my god! Which, by the way, I just want—I just want to throw it out there. That's cannibalism for for Aura. So, a hundred percent. So, um, my turtle chips. It's good. Uh, you guys want to get to this first one? Oh yeah, this let's first do it. Let's go. banger. So, got this is uh, E last with uh, dangerous, and you know, guys, uh, I'm pretty sure it's. I think you guys would agree. It's it's, it's a pretty dangerous song. So. <laughs> oh yeah, it's <laughs> you, very dangerous. You, song. you really had to do that, didn't you, bro? You know, so when I first like just from the first like 13 seconds of the song, I was like, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be in for a banger of a ride, aren't I? <laughs> and then disappoint. Oh, yeah. Absolutely did not disappoint. Now, Nick, you were looking forward to this group too, weren't you? Because you, yeah. you, you did like their, uh, you loved their debut, didn't you? Uh, yes. Yep. I liked so. their debut, um, as well as like a lot of um, the other songs <clears throat> that they've had, um, especially on on their debut album as well. Mm. So, yeah. Debut album? I think so. Anyway, um, but this song. This song I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. I liked it. I like it more than their previous um, song as well that we talked about. Yep. So one thing I like about the song a lot is that it's not. So what you hear in a lot of like, um, in like a lot of this kind of trap style is you usually you hear a very consistent beat that goes all yep. the way through the song. Yep. It's very, very normal for companies to produce a beat like that. This is not mm-hmm. that way. Yep. This, I mean, this beat has multiple switch-ups. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yep. And I really like that because it keeps me on my toes, you know? Yeah, same for myself. Um, what you're describing right there is exactly, like, what I was what I was going to say, too. Because, um, you know, you, th- you mentioned Trap, right? Um, that's kind of mm-hmm. one of the things I didn't like about Trap is that, you know, it's a, a very consistent beat th- throughout with the, uh, what's called a that heavy heavy momentum kind of yeah. you know down kind of down tempo at times um i get really bored of that here mm-hmm. uh you know all this the switch ups man just really does keep it fresh cuz that times it kind of f- bordered to other like genres too right yeah so like this th- this keeps it fresh and nice and also i really like the electronica infusion that they did here mm-hmm. yep. um okay. so like in in the chorus <laughs> there's a lot of synth Yep. Um, you know, a lot of fast moving uh melody lines and stuff like that. That is very electronica. Yeah. And I like that because it adds another element to the kind of already trap beat that we already have here. Yep. Yeah, and you know, um everything I didn't like about a lot of trap is like the, the really crashiness mm-hmm. here. Um like there's time there's points in the song where it does kinda of get a bit of a little bit of crashy, but like it's not like beyond like out of my tolerance. You know, it's like Right. Yeah, you know, it just it's 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 just kind of like you said, like a, a fresh switch up, keeping it fresh. So there's just a lot um, in the song that it's from start to finish. It's if it's still a nonstop ride, you know. But roller coaster. It's a roller coaster. I love it. It is. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's definitely a well done roller coaster. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. it's not like it's not like it's it's a train wreck at the end. You know. Right. Um, one thing I really enjoy is that even at the last. Even at the last little bit of the song, it mm-hmm. still switches up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, especially with the um, with the with that trailing um beat. Yeah. Or not, um, not beat. Uh, the wub. Like they had like a trailing yeah, yeah. wub in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The wub. Uh, and, um. So one thing too, uh, Nick, lately, we, like you and I, we've been kind of like rediscovering um Gen One stuff for like past couple weeks, right? Yeah. And uh, like you, you mentioned, like the the electronica infusion, um, mm-hmm. it it really does kind of that's like something that is really timeless in in K-pop, isn't it? Because like we've seen a lot of that yeah. as well back way mm-hmm. back when. Yep. Except, so long as you use updated synths and updated 808s and stuff, yeah, it will be something that will since it's always getting updated and it's always changing, mm-hmm. it will always generally work. You just yeah. have to follow kind of what modern trends do. Yep. 
uh, so that way it doesn't sound too old or dated. Um, yep. You know, if, if you were to make, if you were to take a Gen One song, like we we've talked about this before, if you were to take a Gen One song, a lot of notable electronic Gen One songs, and re-release them today as they are, <laughs> it would flop very flop hard. hard. Yeah, mm-hmm. it would be a train wreck, and that's because it's an older sound that was popular back then with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, not as modern 808s, not as modern modern synths, mm-hmm. and yep. a because of the because of the time and what was popular then a very basic beat it was very basic very and um it was kind of very like raw yeah very raw and and really full sand into that like when they were going to like techno um here mm-hmm. like you know nowadays it, they'll, they'll kind of splice it in transition it out bring it back mm-hmm. in go to somewhere else um you right. don't spend like you know a full minute into like the genre or mm-hmm. two minutes right. or even like the entire song so yeah yeah which was kind of interesting, uh, like comparatively to the music video itself, it, because there were maybe two, th- uh, around yeah, three, two sets. Um, three sets that they used, and oh yeah, 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 because um, also like that cosmic room that they had as well. Yeah, yeah. Th- it, but like it, it was really consistent with the settings, and mm-hmm. but at the same time, it was contrasting, mm-hmm. and. Th- Every time it changed like style, you would notice that they would change like the area, which was kind of interesting, you know. Yep. Um. Yeah. yeah um. No. They were they were kind of throwing a little bit of flavor with like um some ambient like different ambient lighting, like when you had the red, the mm-hmm. red fill it, fill lighting. Exactly. Yeah. They they would definitely use the lighting to help change, even though it was the same setting. It they just used the lighting to change the ambiance. Yep. Yeah. So, um, man, you know this is a um, so I wasn't as big of a fan as you were um, for like their debut. You know, like mm-hmm. I didn't think it was mm-hmm. bad. Um, it just really wasn't like super like into my style. But mm-hmm. this is this is one that I'm like, yeah, yeah. Do you agree? I think they did a really nice job here because you know when you're switching up the beat this often and. Trans- like transitions are a key like they're a crucial part to a song mm-hmm. um if you don't have good transitions it's not going your song is just factually not going to be good unless you're like like take a single melody and a single beat and run it all the way through some mm-hmm. some uh songs do that yep. that is like a, a big notable one is ballads they will take a general theme a general um motif and just run it through a song yep but that being yeah. said, like here you can't run that because uh, you have like the rap, which is obviously more trappy. Mm-hmm. You have the chorus, which is more electronica, and you have that like uh, dubstep, like trappy breakdown. And so, like the transitions are very necessary here. Yeah, right. I also like that they didn't really transition the same way a ton, like. Um, the first transition is just direct into the next one because why transition? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like they don't do that all the time. They use a long extended note the next time to transition into into back into trap, you know? Right. And I really like that. I really appreciate like the thought that goes into those transitions. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um man. I guess uh um I guess the like the one thing for me that, that is probably like the the weakest part of this whole experience is just i would say even really weak um that just didn't really hit me as hard as like you know the other elements did the choreography mm-hmm. nothing wrong with the choreography it's not bad or mm-hmm. anything it's just it doesn't really it doesn't really kick me as hard as like the song itself does so, yeah right the, and, the, and yeah i'm not the, saying that it's is, bad quality this is definitely yeah. more of a less visual song and definitely more of a listening kind of song um, man, yeah, especially with the, with the, everything that he threw into that song, man. There's just so much to <laughs> unpack in that song. I love it. it is, yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. oh, man. Um, it's about that time to move, move it on to the next one, guys? Yeah, let's go. All right. So, uh, Aura, you want to bring it in? Yeah, uh, let's see. What is our next? All right, so uh, we've we've talked about her before, I, be, I believe. Um, yeah, I think there's so, only one of her releases that we haven't talked about. Yep. I think we've talked about okay. almost everything that she's released, though. So. Mm. 
Uh, but so this artist is Alexa. She is a soloist and with her, the song Never Let You Go. And not gonna lie, this was an interesting change of pace from yeah. her uh, other releases. Yep. Well, I th her last release wrapped up the whole theme, right? The cyberpunk, yeah. uh, the cyberpunk yeah. aesthetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aest aesthetic. Um, but apparently, so like I guess for for this song, there's still kind of like the this is a bit of a sci-fi theme that you're trying to push. At least not so much right. like explicitly, but implicitly. Um, yeah. Because they're talking about like you know Alexa Hart symbolizing the heart of a human code name for artificial intelligence emotional side you know like <laughs> okay so there's still like some kind of sci-fi elements in, in here somewhere there you know right. trying to keep that theme going so mm -hmm. right uh, i mean because if you look at the mv it does very much feature like some aspects from her old mvs but in a more peaceful kind of terms you know so yep. Uh, like the two buildings, you can kind of recognize it from her other MVs, and how it's much more of a more toned down. It's not as an exciting, yep. um, but more of a toned down, more calming kind of setting. But yeah, yep. So um, kind of like what what uh, Oro was saying, or no, it, it is what Oro was saying was like the song is a change up from her previous releases. Mm -hmm. Um, here we have. A style that is very um, indie esque. Um, so, and I, I guess nowadays the the, um, the style would be more called a um, folk pop. So, uh, yeah, it's it's very ballady. Mm -hmm. um, has a lot of ballad elements. One thing that I do that I would have liked is if in those really tense moments right because ballads have er, every song has has a peak has a climax yep and right. i wish in that part she would have used she would have pushed her voice a little farther out so i, okay. I, I think that's, that's so, where the difference is with um like with it being from like ballad to like more of like folk pop mm -hmm. um, or, like more of the indie style because like yeah, you would you would expect that in a ballad, um, uh, in like more of like an indie song, you maybe get that, maybe won't. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the only reason I think it would have been a good idea is because she has showcased through her previous music that she has that power. She has that oh, yeah. innate power in her voice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it would have been a good idea to use it to mm -hmm. further push the limit of the song. So okay. the thing is ballad folk pop all of it is a very limiting genre mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of things you can't do because it just doesn't work to, to the listener right? right um you know if you set like if you set this song to a really fast tempo you know 140 bpm mm -hmm. it's gonna sound like a train wreck and yeah. it's because mm -hmm. it's not meant to be set that fast um but at the same time it's a lot of it is on the singer to push the song that's why, um, for example, operatic singers mm -hmm. have always been really popular for ballads. Is because their vocal ability to push a song is very good. Yeah, and I think a big part of that too, um, why that w works for like ballads, especially is like a lot of the content of the meanings and, and the lyrics, right? For ballads, they usually sh showcase a lot of pain and anguish, mm -hmm. and you'd want to. You know put in that kind of power to really showcase like that that the strain of the heart and whatnot for those moments um in this song though we don't I mean, with the lyrics we don't have it, it centers more on the the, the longing um mm -hmm. you know the uh the longing the, the the loneliness less so than like the pain like you know the the lyrics don't talk about like you know the pain and anguish it it's more like implied, you know, like that's associated with those feelings of, of longing, you know, wanting to see that person again. Um, so I think, I think not pushing, you know, uh, with her, with the power that you're talking about, mm -hmm. I just thought within the, within the content of the lyrics, I just don't see where she could. You know? I mean, where she could is always, a, is always the high note. 
Right. Be it through an extended high note or through a slightly pushed vocal. Um, that would help to accentuate that feeling of, of loneliness. Especially if what, what you could always do is you, as she's holding that high note, you take out the instruments, you take out everything, and it's just her holding that high note. Because that would accentuate the feeling of, of loneliness because it's just her singing. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about the high note towards the towards the end of the song, right? Like right in the yeah, last yeah, uh, three yeah, seconds. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I I actually uh, like the way she did it there because like it was just, she, she didn't push it at all, right? It was just really kind of like more like a whisper, like can't really bring up the strength to push it because you're just feeling so lonely and and, and just dark inside. You know? So, um, another thing too is the. Uh, our listening experiences are a bit different because I'm, I was using my uh, DAC for it, and the mm. DAC has an up, up sampling to kind of like bring it more closer to like losses quality. And mm. dude, for myself, like when I listen I mean, to I it, I use a DAC too, but yeah, but does your because most DACs don't have a up sampling uh, uh, hardware in them, do they? Most, I mean, a lot of new DACs do, yeah. Right, because I. For the ones I looked standard, at, I haven't at least for seen. Enthusiasts. But anyway, go. <laughs> but I mean, uh, like for me, I did it for myself because uh, I don't have the whole Adax stuff and whatever. Mm-hmm. I still barely understand all of that. Just saying, I don't understand jack of that. <laughs> um, and for me, I still really enjoyed the song, but I also see where Nick is coming from with. She could have belted a little bit more, especially towards like the two, three, four minute mark. Um, I don't remember. Well, not the four minute mark. That was that's way too late. That's at the, the end of the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is like the butt end of the song. Um, but the last I, fifteen I, seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> like around like the early three minute mark, I do very much see where if she kind of belted out the her vocals a little bit more. I think it could have added a little bit more emotion to that loneliness or if they kind of somehow added something else to kind of spice it up I, I very much see where they were coming film um but yeah it's it it I, I, I enjoyed it but I see where it could have had a little bit more work for improvement is what I'm saying I wouldn't even call it mm. an improvement. I'd just say it'd be something different. Because mm. so, for my, myself personally, I would keep it as as it is mm. for that part, especially. So. It's one thing that's always good about music is that music, there's no right or wrong. Yeah, right. It's just you know? different. Yeah. Um, and like both of these options can can invoke the the same emotion, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It's just how you want to convey that emotion. And mm-hmm. which part of which yeah. aspects of the emotion that you want to highlight mm-hmm. more? Mm-hmm. So. Yep. And I mean, for us, realistically, I mean, like because we we didn't write the song, we don't know what they were going for. Right. Um. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of ways to to convey emotion in song, mm-hmm. and I think that is one thing here that she did really well mm-hmm. is actually like effectively convey the emotion. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. Because. You know, I would not have, I would not have bet money on her being a good, like, ballad singer. Obviously, she's a good right. singer, right? Yeah. Right. But like, it takes a special type of person to to sing a ballad. Mm-hmm. Um, and and do it well with with emotion. Yep. And so, I definitely would not have been like bet money on her being able to to do something like this. So I'm thoroughly impressed. Mm-hmm. Very. I'm- Thoroughly impressed. This is actually like my, my most listened to song of the week. Yeah. I, um, what's up? I would have I would have liked to see uh, the reason why I'm saying that I do agree with the, uh, the vocal range thing is because with the like belting would be just to see what she's keeping off vocal a, a, a better vocal range like just see her vocal range mm-hmm. in this kind of like song and the setting for this you know. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, if you want, if you want to make a like a showcase song for her, her abilities, mm-hmm. so. yeah. Um, the 
I think one of the most what makes him really impressive is just the emotional engagement. Like you said, mm-hmm. right? She conveys the emotions very well. Oh yeah. Um, not a lot of singers can do that. And then, not only that, but also get you kind of like get you emotionally engaged. At least for myself, anyway. It's like, you know, I'm not sure at what point in the song. Like it just for because the first time I listened to it, right? You know, I was expecting the the usual Alexa release that we had, and then all of a sudden, like the song taking this turn. Um, mm-hmm. At some point, I was like really emotionally engaged. Like I was really emotionally invested in the song. And yeah. by the time the song was getting to like the closing moments, I was like, "Wow, you know, I think there's a ninja in this room cutting onions." <laughs> mm-hmm. The onion ninja gets you every time. So, yeah. Um, another thing that I really, really, really loved about the song or this MV, um, mm-hmm. the settings that they use in this MV. Oh, they were know, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you know, I I think. Uh, they were trying to go for like a, a an empty city. Um, mm-hmm. For the most part, they, they did. It's just that in certain areas, you you couldn't really because like uh, um the overpass scene and there's the cars in the background. Like I mean, you can't really yeah really do anything about that. There was a, it a is, guy it it blurred out in the background. Well, not they didn't they didn't blur him out, but because of the way the camera was um mm-hmm. was set up, you know the background part the background was you know um, was out of the depth of field. But you mm-hmm. saw a person in the background. But for the most part, like they really did kind of help convey that loneliness uh, mm-hmm. and that longing in the song, because you know she's walking through, mm-hmm. she's walking on these roads, you know, she, she uh, and just it's empty. She's by herself. Right. You know the color palette they use for it, the mm-hmm. little, um, you know, props that they use, like they had that. Uh, wind up toy and she, you know, she had mm-hmm. the key like man mm-hmm. this is very beautiful music video yeah and uh, I, I liked when it through the usage of like transitions like how they were depending on where it was and what was she, what she was doing throughout the music video how they kind of mm-hmm. muffled the song like yeah to kind of um, create that uh I know what you're talking about because, like, especially like when she uh, held up the um, the, the, the film old camera, camera, so it added yep. it's got kind of like an, a retro equipment kind of yep. feel where and you're watching they, on an older camera. And in the mm-hmm. way they, they um, uh, filtered the the music to sound like it's it's you know like it would from that era. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and I think that was really well done and kind of transitioning it back where it doesn't hit so hard to mm-hmm. from like one part to another it was a lot really smooth if if it was part of her older like other music i don't think it would have worked as well but oh, yeah. doing it this way it it, it works so well um and and in the oh, the closing scene too for the music video where she's just walking in, in the evening and you got the you, know, you can mm-hmm. see like the milky way in the, in the sky and oh, fireflies or, or whatever like like yeah you know, it's it. You, you could argue that it's cliche, and you know what? I don't care. I love it. <laughs> hey, cliche I works. Liked, I also like their option to use widescreen here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it gave it more of a movie, like aesthetic. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, which helps with their with the scenes that they set as well. Yeah. Um, because it is it is vi- like very visually appealing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I already do um, love music videos like this, you know. So, all right. Oh, man, you guys got anything else? No, no I'm ready. All right. Um, Nick, you want to bring this one in? Uh, sure. So, this is Victon with what I said. And, um,. This is okay. So to start this off, it actually starts off with a little bit of bra- like muted brass, mm-hmm. and oh, right off the bat, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I was not expecting it. And at all. so, like, it already had my attention in like the first like couple seconds. I, I love, th- you know, I love my brass music, and mm-hmm. I I really loved that they brought that in. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh. So I was really like already like they already had my attention like right off the bat mm-hmm. and so i really like that um 
going in after that, um, you know, kind of that intro, first verse, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I was not expecting that switch up. Yep. I was thrown for a loop. Um, mm-hmm. but there I mean, quite a few switch ups, weren't there? Yeah. 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 Definitely quite a few switch ups. But, um, I, yeah, I was, I was disoriented. And then they switch, they just throw it back. And I was like, wow, like that actually just happened, you know? Yeah. Um, I love drops like that. Mm-hmm. Those, that's probably my favorite way to drop is just go. Just go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this song um, it's definitely got a, uh, a lot of the uh, like uh, um, South American, Latin American, uh, like aspects in there. Could, yeah, they, mm-hmm. they sampled a lot, of, quite a bit. So, and you you'll see in the Which, comments. I people, think Victon's done before, right? I'm not too sure when I think about it. At least not recently that I can remember. Mm, maybe. So um, you'll see in the comments a lot of people will say like, "Oh, why does it sound like Cardi B's whatever or Little Mixes?" I can't remember what song. Um, I don't know. And it um, before I got to reading the comments, you know, I, I checked the, the whole song itself, and there was some it was it was something that drive me nuts as well. Like you know, why does it sound like I've heard it before? And like, well, we have, you know, um, there was at one point where um, one of the lines that he kind of just dropped it was like, you know, I like it like that. And I was like, once I heard that, I'm like, got it. That's where that's where I'm, um, where that familiarity is. Um, mm. you, you know, for it's one of those things, right? In, in North America, in the United States, everybody knows the song. Not everybody knows the title of the song, but everybody would have at least heard it in passing from a commercial or in a movie or on a TV show. Um, you know, it's a song that was like originally came out in like the '60s or whatever. Got a re- mm-hmm. got like a remit, re or a cover be released in like the 90s and then just every every ever since then like you know you see songs that just you know they take these sample parts of the of, of it you know every song that okay. ha- or i say not every song but like there's a lot of songs in the, in the past like 20 or 30 years or whatever that sample from from that song i like it like that so and mm-hmm. that's what we we're hearing in here is is some parts of that as well as probably some of the other tropes from like latin american music that i'm just not familiar with so so, I mean, Nick probably knows more about that stuff because, like, I just—I want the impression that uh, Nick, you, you, you kind, you don't, you do more into Latin American music than, than us, than the rest of us do, right? So. Probably, yeah. Um, I've done quite a bit of like research on like Latin American and especially South American music mm-hmm. because there are so many. You, I mean, you go, you know, you go halfway across a country and it's a completely different style of music. Yep. Even there's within so many Brazil, there's a music lot. Inside of, yeah, there's so many different styles of music inside of South America that it's so interesting to learn about because there are so many different cultures. Yep. And it's such like a short uh, span of like land, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and inside of that, like this is very much, um, this is very much kind of a mesh of quite a few genres. Yep. Inside of Latin America. Um, I can't exactly pinpoint where because everything draws from each other yep. in, inside of inside of South America. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely think it's South American from what I understand, but um, I definitely think like um, I definitely think they did a great job with the infusion here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and utilizing that to like um utilizing that to kind of amplify the how do i put it the unpredictableness of the song yeah and um and even from the source too or one of the sources like like i was talking about that one song oh i like like that that's kind of sampled in here as well um that song itself is also a fusion to begin with because uh, um that song okay. came from uh, Boogaloo, not the dance or not the electric Boogaloo mm-hmm. like dance, whatever. <laughs> um, like that was a, a style that was like really popular in the '60s, and apparently it was like a a mashup of like uh, mm-hmm. like you know R and B, like classic R and B, and then yep. like okay. mambo, um, soul music, and, and whatnot. So it was already like a fusion to begin with, 
um, as it was popular in the 60s, you saw a lot of fusion during that era. So, you know, it's it's like it's so fascinating to me, right? You, you take mm-hmm. genres that are already fusion fusion genres, and then you have you have a song right now. It's like another fusion of these other fusions. So it's so, and you just get a banger I mean, of a song. Yeah. You know, the the, the the great thing, yeah, the great thing about K-pop is that there is no like there's no genre that's like oh this is k-pop and nothing but k-pop yeah mm-hmm. every song every k-pop song that you've ever heard is an infusion some way or another yep. um you know there is no pure r&b there's no pure ballad there is no pure anything it's all infusions mm-hmm. um more or less some are some are inspired by some are ta- like taken a few like maybe notable 808s from yep. and then some are just halfway infusions um but like and so that's like an amazing part about k-pop is that even if you know what the infusion is for a song before you even like hear it you still have no idea what's gonna happen (laughs) oh yeah yeah and it's it's it's, that's part of the ride you know is seeing what they do with it though Mm -hmm. um you know for victon i'm not too sure like they're not very um, you don't have a, a, a wide profile, right? Uh, for a stateside, like uh, K-pop fans. I do not believe that they are very well known over here. No, I, I think they're more Korea based. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think this is a song. Like, if there is any uh, song that would help, like, I think a lot of American like K-pop fans would love. I think this would be one of them because this is just mm-hmm. because of that familiarity, like familiarity with the uh, um. With you know the aspects of the song, mm-hmm. yeah, and I and I think that's like that. I'm pretty sure like they said like that's one of the key facts or key things, right? With um, a song popularity is just mm-hmm. having kind of like a base familiarity with with stuff that's already there, like pop music, money keys, right, or money chords. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Victim, um, I think would get a high recommend from me. Mm-hmm. One of the things when it comes to i don't if that confused me in the music video was some of the settings like and and some of the pops like i Mm -hmm. still don't understand the black and white checkerboarded horse with the heart and whatever in in the setting um that kind of confused me uh i think that was like in the two minute mark or something i can't remember but uh, some of the aesthetics kind of did confuse me throughout the music video. I'm not saying that they were bad. I'm just saying that they kind of confused me. I, mean, I thought you liked that, though. When, when there's like, a lot of things to like try and unpack and unwrap to get to yeah. the meaning of. But I also enjoyed under having some kind of understanding about it, too. <laughs> <laughs> like... There's a lot to unpack, so I'm going to. If I really wanted to know more about it, I'd have to try to like unpack everything. Yeah. And then I don't know oh, if it's something that has to do with like them as a group. But yeah, I, don't, I, I still don't. That. I, I, I just still don't understand the horse. Horses, horses are like the hardest for me to understand for some reason. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know there's like some kind of cultural uh, significance of horses um, mm. in some, like in one of the cultures that I just don't know. I'm like, I'm not too familiar with any of that stuff. So, right. um, even uh, I forgot to mention too, like uh, in one of the scenes or, you know, their dance scenes, right? Their group dance scenes, they're wearing the black and the gold uh, outfits. Like that is definitely like, a, um, like again, pulling, pulling from that regional style as well, right? And those those outfits look, look pretty slick. I mean, I'd never wear them, but man, damn, they look good. <laughs> Actually, no. Now that I think about it, this music video is very much chess based. So if you think about it that way, it's a the horse is actually representing a knight. The knights, yeah, because like yeah. they have the scene in like forty seconds in or, or so, um, or thirty seconds in with the you know, where he's rapping to you on a chessboard. Okay. I don't know why I didn't get that till now. I feel dumb. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. This chess. <laughs> All right. Oh, why didn't I recognize it till now? Okay. 
Never mind. It, it's it's a very much chess themed mm. music video. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you guys got anything else before moving on? I'm good. No, right. I'm I'm still stuck on the chess thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this next <laughs> this next artist is uh Ban Hana. Uh, I remember I introduced uh, Nick to her last year, mm -hmm. and we were really thoroughly impressed with her her vocal ability. Um, mm -hmm. and which she sh showcases in the song um, titled If mm -hmm. and wow um, this song with her vocal deliveries and it is set to this music video masterpiece for me I don't know about you guys mm -hmm. but I feel like it, like again um, this is another one that really like blew me away so uh, Nick um, you want to take it away? yeah so one thing that I've talked about before but I'm going to reiterate that has become a trend recently has that been that panning synth um mm -hmm. and we've seen it a lot recently inside of r&b um especially for well especially for krnb mm -hmm. um but and i think that's a really good use here to just kind of add on to mm -hmm. the instrumentation that's already there mm -hmm. um but also it, that gives it a little bit of an R&B feel. Yep. Right. So it's not just like a straight ballad. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, again, like we were talking about with the infusions. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and of course, once they enter the strings, my heart's gone. Um, because <laughs> I, strings are a quick way to my heart. Same. Uh, yeah. So like, the the strings i think were also well done i really like that mm -hmm. when they also have the guitarist playing mm -hmm. you can hear his fingers moving across i love that the, um you can hear it moving across the 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 fingerboard yep i, I love that when you're able to pick up all here all those details Fret, yeah all the frets and whatever mm -hmm. yeah man i that was so cool because it gives it a little more of like a lo-fi-esque feel because like those stuff, that stuff is stuff that usually gets cut out of songs. Yep. Right. They they just take it right out because uh, it's just unnecessary sound essentially. If you want a yep. cleaner song, you take it out. Which is another uh, thing that we've noticed that was different from like Gen One. Like they always clean that stuff up. Not nowadays, they leave a lot of it, a lot of it in. Mm -hmm. Depending on the, of, yeah, yeah. So I think a a big part of that was because Gen One was already so raw and exposed. Yeah, you don't want to make it more raw and exposed, so mm -hmm. they cleaned yeah. it. Yeah. But now our music is so clean that you want to make it a little more raw and exposed. Yeah. So now we add some of that back in to make it seem well. I mean, human. Yeah, it's much right. more organic. You know. Yep. It doesn't feel cold, machine like. So. Also, I love banhana here because th the best thing about her voice is that she can belt and it's not overpowering it's not right. overpowering and none of the emotion is lost you know it's not like she's just belting out to to, to you know showcase like hey i can belt like i can belt while carrying this emotion like my god mm -hmm. dude mm -hmm. um one thing that i got i just want to realize like last night because this is another song that i listened to a lot this week Mm -hmm. um, right. You remember? Uh, I mean, so you've been. Have you been listening to uh, Big Jian's uh, um, albums? Mm -hmm. Bruh, does does she not like feel feel more like a a more modern uh, take on of Big Jian from like twenty years ago, fifteen years ago? A little bit, yeah. If yeah. if you were, yeah, um, a little bit of a different voice type. Yeah, different vocal uh, voice type, but like that same kind of like inflection of emotion and mm -hmm. power. Yeah, definitely has a really great uh, emotional inflection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing that really helps with that emotional inflection is obviously the scene. Right? Yeah. And the story <sighs> behind the MV. Yeah. But also is the dynamic range. It's mm -hmm. like the, the, unfortunately, well, in my opinion, unfortunately, they mixed it so the dynamic range was pretty flat. Yep. But if you've ever heard a ballad artist live, you know that the dynamic range on this is going to be insane. Mm. Yep. Because in, in live performances, 
the dynamic range they i mean when they're hitting that high note they're belting that i mean yeah. they're full volume mm -hmm. and everything when they're singing like in the intro here um they're singing in a kind of like almost whisper like we talked about yep. with alexa okay and so um that dynamic range difference matters a lot instead of a ballad yeah and just for everybody else who's not tracking um the dynamic range is referring to the range of, of loudness so like when you have a flat dynamic range the whisper parts don't sound as quiet as they should be compared to like the really loudest parts so when you have a full dynamic range the quiet parts are really really quiet the loud parts are really really loud it, mm -hmm. it really helps those, those parts like really kind of pop out i guess um so yeah thank you for uh, clearing that up because i was just smiling and nodding pretending i understood <laughs> yeah. so yeah um and so as far as that goes like usually ballads are mixed to have a pretty a, a more flat dynamic range mm -hmm. unless like the mixer really knows the the artist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but that being said like that being said um this live would be amazing oh, to yeah. listen to mm -hmm. because I'm sure that belt is actually really loud mm -hmm. with how far she's projecting like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, because, and, and it also kind of helps with like the emotional engagement, right? Because, like, you know, if there's a part where she's whispering, right, in, in a song, you know, either because, like, it, the, the strain of the heart is just so, so much that, you know, you can barely get the strength out to, like, to sing. Um, it, you know, it, that that's like a, another, like, you, um, form of like immersion into the song and mm -hmm. then like as you get to like the other parts where she belts it out right um like yeah you know it, like it's a part of the song where like sh um you're healing or whatever and like, now i have strength again to to really belt this part out you know like, the, mm -hmm. uh, like an uplifting part of the song um yeah mm -hmm. you know so um this song and we were talking about like the visuals as well <sighs> It's it's a it's it's a, it's a K drama, guys. It, it, it is. It is. You know, it is a K drama. Um, you are right. She, she she she's in she's in love with it, this guy. It is a very unfortunate. Yeah, she's it, in love with this guy, yeah, but but to him, she's just a friend. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say something else that's really unfortunate about this uh, MV. It's not gonna it's not gonna be on KBS. Instagram. Why? Instagram. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Ben on KBS. <laughs> auto band. Yeah. Uh, Literally auto band. They did so, such a good job with the music video too. Like yeah. showing showing like the the um those moments in, her, in, her, in like on her face where where she's like where she really you know she, she's she really was in love with this guy. Absolutely and head over heels. You know, just just the but, minor things even, you know, where you know, he he's buttoning up the collar on, on her coat and you can just see like mm -hmm. the love in her eyes. The, but then, the butterflies in the stomach. The, yeah, you know she's the, she's tossing and turning in bed like as she's like getting the text from this from this guy. Um, yeah. it's so it's it's such a lovely music video, and it's so relatable to a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. I think most people out there have experienced this. Um, and just, again, you know, when, when you listen to the song, to to while watching this music video, man, it just the the emotions that she is conveying. In this song, it really does like it's just, they they compound on each other. It makes it, mm -hmm. it makes it that much more impactful. So and then that pause for for the call at the very end before it finishes yeah. off makes it hit that like this. Is, I know Nick talks about pauses, but I don't think this pause is going to be in the like if you actually buy the song and you listen to it. I don't think it's going to be in. Uh, but that pause to try to in the song to try and then having that phone call just before it ends off just mm -hmm. makes it hit so much harder and i mean especially when you hear what he says like you know like saying who, who that is like a friend yeah just, mm -hmm. you know like damn you just got this whole music video <laughs> of this girl being being lovely you know just sh shooting like shooting love hearts through her eyes at this guy and then at the end of it all mm -hmm. to him she's just a friend Right, um, your heart yeah. breaks for her. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One thing I would like to see in the 
actual song is is definitely at least you know a um a b a half like a half measure or full measure pause, pause there. yeah mm-hmm. just to like let all that tension that like from, from that peak just yeah so, so let the tension from from that peak kind of come down yeah. and then mm-hmm. just like be like a weight you know mm-hmm. yeah. such, a, it, such a good song guys it mm-hmm. is and then i uh, this is something that nick uh said earlier but uh i didn't get a chance to kind of like put my two cents in it's that panning um mm-hmm. i i actually really enjoyed this kind of soft panning because when it's a hard pan uh you know those are the songs that i'm not too into because those hard pans kind of i don't know what what does it for me but it makes me feel sick but this soft pan it makes it so much easier to digest through the song it helps the song it helps enhance the song and i think that's something that i really enjoy is these soft pan panning sounds yeah i think it was um big six time you had a problem yeah with, right yeah i think so yeah. yeah i still listen to that song mm-hmm. um but yeah i because I, I remember you talking about that it made you kind of like almost seasick yeah mm-hmm. yeah like because it, it, this isn't disorientating it's calming Mm-hmm. It's, and I think that's what works so well for it, this song is that it's not hitting hitting you so hard. Um, with the panning. So, all right, just my uh, little two cents in the music. Anything, uh, anything else before we uh, wrap this up with our last one? No, I all don't right. think so. Nick, take it away. This is all you, bro. Nick again. All right. Well, um, I mean, you know, I don't know this group at all, but, um, (laughs) Mm -hmm. so this is Ace with, uh, Fave Voice featuring Thutmose and, uh, Steve Aoki. So this is actually a song that was released last year. Um, and it, Steve Aoki decided to do a remix of it. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who Steve Aoki is, learn, please. He's an amazing. I mean, amazing it's hard to person. imagine anybody who doesn't need, know Steve Aoki. Like, he's done collabs with so many big artists, and mm-hmm. he's headlined so like so much. Like, it's hard to imagine anybody who doesn't know this guy. Yeah, you know? seeing um, him on stage is pretty crazy too. Like, I remember him shooting a bunch of stuff out, and yeah, what? K- All right, yeah, yeah. I think there was like a cake cannon or whatever or <laughs> cake cannon. cannon yo i'm sounds down like something that sounds like something stupid okay would do yeah. yeah um and um and thought Moses is a rapper yep. who mm-hmm. actually this is not his first work inside of k-pop he has done stuff with um league of legends before oh mm-hmm. yeah 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 yep. So he he has worked with League of, with Riot Games before on League of Legends, which is working obviously is working with G Idol. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, was that last year or 2018? It was, it was last 2018. year. Okay. No, it, it was a uh, True Giants. The song. Oh True yeah, Giants. you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Um. So. Yeah, because they didn't do anything um, in 2019. In 2018, I remember we we were talking about that we before had, we even started this channel. Yeah, we, right. it was uh, Pop Stars. Pop Stars yeah. with the uh, KDA, and then it was True Giants. Um, I can't remember if it was True Giants that was a song, or if it, that was a group name. Um, oh, but, wait, no, that was the one. They did do something in 2019. Never mind. Yeah, so and that's, I yeah. think that's that, the one that you're saying is, is from 2019 as well. So we've had stuff from every year since then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So yeah. it's not his first work inside of the K pop industry either. And honestly, that shows. Yep. Um, his his transition out of, um, like into Ace, mm-hmm. like his his delivery transition was actually perfect for what you need to transition mm-hmm. to a to a group. Yeah, and I really love his delivery it, too. Like the most, yeah. like I was I, I was really into it. Like, yep. So yeah, I think I think it worked well. Um, I was also surprised the direction that steve aoki took with this yeah because i mean fave okay fave boys wasn't like 
it was it's it was probably a pretty hard song to like remix honestly <laughs> because like you're taking a polished group song yeah mm-hmm. and you're basically breaking it down to f- to figure out what you can do differently mm-hmm. and like this this is not just like a, a, some random polished group song this was polished by a company like a full on corporation mm-hmm. like they're going to make it perfect if they can Right. And Beat Interactive isn't going to, like, you know, cheap out on making a song at any point for Ace. Mm-hmm. So, um, definitely big props there. But, yeah, I I actually uh, did enjoy this song a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually didn't think you guys were going to like it as much. I didn't think so either. But I think, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess because... Uh, um of how much longing I've had for some more like you know EDM type music and, and uh, remixes and whatnot, that's just really been kind of help helping for me, I guess. So. For me, it, I do I do like very much like Steve Aoki um music, uh, and also seeing how it feels different from Favorite Boys, like. It's a remix of Favorite Boys, but having seeing it like be a remix and how different it is mm-hmm. in two Favorite Boys, I found really interesting. You know, uh, yep. I lit- I had to go back. Literally, had to go. Okay, I had I have to go back to see if I'm watching the same kind of thing, and it has a very different feel. It. And having Steve Aoki and Thutmos, uh kind of interact with the song and add their own spin to it um, makes a ma- kind of makes this a whole different song, uh, in a way, you know. And yeah. I think that's kind of why I liked it is just because it's the same but different. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I think st- I think definitely one one big thing for steve aoki is that he didn't he didn't change the song into a com- something completely different but also he didn't go overboard on the effects yeah i was about to say because yeah. um the it's you see other songs where they have um you know not just remixes but like you know some original songs as well where they just like drop in a lot of effects right mm-hmm. um where it's like effects on top of effects on top of effects transition to more effects mm-hmm. Um, and it just becomes a crashy mess. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, unless that's what they're going for, right? You know, but here, mm-hmm. um, you, it's it's odd, like because you, you get some points in the song where there are some empty spaces, where it's just mm-hmm. the you get where it's just a beat. That's mm-hmm. just for for a short fraction of time. You know, it's just it's just a beat, and mm-hmm. I actually really, really uh, enjoyed that. You know, that the song just was not overloaded at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, really, it really felt like it. Oh, my no, bad. Go ahead. What, what? No, 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 go ahead. Oh, it felt like uh something you you could definitely like dance to at a like rave or something, or at like a DJ concert. Um, mm-hmm. how it kind of transitions into that, and adds in those whole like digital effects. It yeah. really added on to that too. Yeah. You know. And at the same time too, like. It's something I could just sit down and just jam to, and just, mm-hmm. you know, enjoy enjoy some drinks. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely um yeah I mean I I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much um so pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Music video wise, uh, what you got? <laughs> well, uh, there are changes um obviously, and it gives more, much more of an EDM feel um the ace very the change in the song does make it in the boys do kind of put on more of a party feel like they're ready mm-hmm. to go party they're ready to uh go to a rave and dance and then having all the neon lights and all that uh adds on to that whole like EDM party feel yeah um, basically it's been EDMified 
Yeah, I, I really, I really enjoy like all those like overlaid effects that they had uh, going on, mm-hmm. like some you know, some cute icons and music, music, music icons mm-hmm. and whatnot, um, yeah. sprinkled around as well. Like it really did help kind of sell that EDM feel. So. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's something that I feel like um, would very much work in po- the party scene. Um, yeah. Possibly, uh, as well as um, like the. Japanese EDM scene as well. I I've, I can very much see it work. The visuals work in that kind of scene. I'm gonna need you to drop me some some of that Japanese EDM stuff that you're you're talking about. So yeah, you're gonna have to put it. In the, you're gonna have to put it into the chat later. <laughs> I have to remember some because I just listened to some before and it's been a while. All right. So. All right. I think it's that time uh, we get to our. Uh, Pick of the week, guys. MV of the week. Oh boy. Hmm. Well. Well, now. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? Any which way you go, it is not a bad pick. So. True. Yeah. One, two, three. Not it. I'm gonna lose. You know that. <laughs> All right. What you got? I'm gonna have to go with Ace. Right on. Nick, you got yours? Uh, yeah. So, um, if I was forced to pick from our current lineup, um, definitely would have been Elas. Okay. Um, however, since I'm not, um, I'm going to pick uh, Lisa with Dawn. It's mm-hmm. a song that we did not talk about this week. Mm-hmm. Um, it is amazing. It is um, definitely all of rock and metal. But, Which um, I'm kind of surprised, uh, like, cause uh, I I, ha- I I haven't heard you like be interested in m- many of Lisa's songs before. Mm, I know actually, I know quite a few. I'm I'm rather familiar with her work before. Okay. Before I even came into this, um, before I even came into the like ISN, right? I was okay. I was actually rather familiar with her work. Um, okay. I, it's not like somebody I actively followed, but like if it appeared in my recommended, I give it a listen type of deal. Okay. Um, however, like as as you guys have seen lately with like Purple Kiss and mm-hmm. Dreamcatcher and stuff, I've been really really into rock. Yeah. Um, especially like Rolling Quartz stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is that was like perfect to add on to my my rock playlist because I really want to be able to fill out a rock playlist. Mm-hmm. I think rock is a very niche genre in mm-hmm. like heavy like heavy rock you know metal is a very niche genre mm-hmm. inside of like korea in itself for like more popular mainstream stuff yeah okay and so being able to follow a playlist would be really nice um also the 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 replayability on a lot of those songs is really high mm-hmm. as well so yeah uh, uh for myself between alexa and uh Bahana, all right I those are my picks Okay, so I mean, like uh, they're both amazing. So, <laughs> so basically, we mm-hmm. have Alexa's "Never Let You Go," Bonhana's "If," uh, Lisa. Ace, Ace, the most Steve Aoki's favorite. Lisa's "Dawn." Yeah, good. You got, we got a good stuff. spread, guys. Like it, it's weird. Like we've got a, a we, we, we're all over the place with our picks. Yeah, mm-hmm. that sh- that shows how like close all the songs are this week mm-hmm. so, yeah so all another right. yeah you know another one that um was a uh, for me was like you know desi and dj Green like that i listened to a lot this week but again mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. i was just kind of on this edm kick so yeah um yeah d- there were there were also like there was a lot of songs that were also up there for me so oh yeah mm-hmm. so yeah uh quick shots all right Quick shot. Oh boy. Because I know Nick All is right. dying to get to these. Bro, you don't understand. I'm I'm so excited for my two. Alright. So um gonna be a little bit of me essentially just fangirling here. Um so okay, JYP announces two PM has plans for a comeback as a full group following Juno's military discharge that is coming in March. Um, if you don't know who 2PM is, I'm sorry, and educate yourself. 
because 2PM is actually a really amazing group. Um, they have not had a full group comeback since 2016 due to uh, like military service that is mandatory yeah. in South Korea. Um, as well as uh, members doing other things at the moment, like, um, you know, Taekyeon doing other things and um, other stuff such as that. I heavily encourage you to go listen to uh, 2PM's music because mm -hmm. it is honestly amazing. So w very, very excited for that. Okay. I guess uh, to continue on with the JYP thing. Um, so some good news uh, and kind of bad news. Um, GOT7 is leaving, well, as of the 19th, so after, when this releases, it's going to be after the 19th, but GOT7's leaving uh, JYP. There's still going to be GOT7, just not JYP GOT7. They're keeping their name, they're keeping the music rights from what I hear. Um, so, oh, and, still, and the music rights too? Yeah. At least that's what I hear. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, but Got Seven gets to keep a lot of what Got is Got Seven. They're just not going to be in JYP. Each of the members are going to do their own thing, such as acting, uh, being part of their own company. Uh, Mike has started up a YouTube channel, which is almost at a mill. <laughs> follow Without it subscribe videos? to it and they still don't have he still doesn't have as of this recording he still doesn't have a video but you know, <laughs> he'll probably have a video soon <laughs> um, that's how you do it yeah right so um and yeah like all the members have been tweeting uh bam bam's been like interacting with fans on twitter so yeah i i think this is a good move for the boys um yeah because, yeah, all the members are leaving uh, JYP. All right. Well, Nick, what's this last piece of deadly news that you got? All right, so back to my fangirling. Um, so Dreamcatcher is celebrating their fourth debut anniversary. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Kind of. Um, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and <laughs> so they've unveiled a, an official light stick. Light weapon. And robe. Um, so... Running, running meme in the insomnia community is that uh, we're kind of like a cult. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and Dreamcatcher has now confirmed that we actually are a cult uh, because this light stick is actually a three-piece light stick that, when put all together, is a staff. And the rope looks like something that actually came from like a cult. <laughs> um, this is what the this is now the biggest light stick in K-pop now. It's a yeah, yeah, hands down. Three-piece light stick. My God, it is a three-piece light stick. So, um, yeah, uh, definitely interesting. Of course, you already know I'm getting it. Have to. Literally required. By law. <laughs> By law. Yeah, I uh, literally can't. No. Robe and all. Um, robe and all. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, I mean, how many groups do you know that have robes that go along with their light staff? <laughs> Man. How many can you say that have a light staff? Light staff, yeah. Yeah. Like, come on. So, uh, definitely really awesome um, that, Dream, that Dreamcatcher is getting an official light stick. It's been mm -hmm. four years, sort of, um, without, you know, a light stick. So, we finally have one that is, like, actually official that mm. people can you know, go to concerts and support them with. Um, I also noticed it says version one under the pictures. So I wonder if they already have plans for like a new kind of improved version. Oh man. I think it's, yeah. Maybe, maybe, stick. maybe a longer one. That's like actually six feet. And... <laughs> <laughs> Gen this two is will how have... far you must stay away. Yeah. <laughs> Gen, so... Gen two will have like, like, uh, was it like, a, um, something that looks like sparks to shoot out of it. You know? Yep. Yep. hundred percent. So, um, definitely really excited, and congrats to them for getting a, a light stick. Right. You know, Dreamcatcher actually come a really long way, so yep. it's nice to see that. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. Yep. 
Alrighty. Thank you for watching. This has been Honest Nation. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click that bell icon if you want to know when we upload in the future. All of our socials will be in the links down below. Make sure you go check those out. If you like the content and want to consider giving back, we have a Patreon. Um, be sure to check that out. And uh, yeah, I, I, it yeah. got a lot shorter now that I just said socials are in the, in the description. You know that? Yeah. yeah. And thank you to um, our patrons for uh, donating. Thank you. Yep. We got definitely more, thank you to our patrons as well. We definitely got more content lined up for you guys. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. 100%. So, um, and with that, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.